that's good. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so welcome Island. everyone. Oh no, got to start over. Okay, welcome everyone. Start over. I had a drink in my hand. There you go. What are you welcoming people to? Our interview we're doing with Annette. Okay. Can I do this again my way? Yeah. Thank you. Welcome everyone to an interview that Megan and I have been looking forward to from about 30 days ago. Oh, yeah. This is Annette. Hi. <laughs> Annette has been with us for 30 days today. What do you mean by with us? Yeah. Well, at our <laughs> house doing a immersion, not an intensive, because I don't think anyone could do anything for 30 days intensive. So it's an immersion and we wanted, we invited her to come here to experience how we do business, how we do life, how we stay healthy and happy, and that it can be done by anyone from anywhere. And we're going to just ask some questions about Annette's time here before she got here, while she was here, and what she's looking forward to taking home with her, with probably some extra suitcases, I assume, right? Actually, no, I don't need any extra suitcases. Oh, that's good. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I can fit. Cool. So, when I reached out to you to ask you if you were interested in doing this, what did you think was going to happen? I didn't think. Actually, I ignored you. You ignored me. I did, because it was just like a post in passing. And you made a comment on a post and I was like, eh, like everybody else is commenting on the post. Right. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And I didn't really, I didn't think anything of it. And then we circled back, like maybe two months later, we circled back and you're like, I told you to come here for 30 days. And I was like, what's he talking about? And that's what I said. What's he talking about? So honestly, I, I had actually, in all honesty, I had no idea what I was coming here for. So I, you and I have had so many conversations, well, we've all had so many conversations while you're here, but I remember, I think you had been here about two weeks. Hey, we gotta, hold on, I can't, this what? stuff is toxic. Oh, it oh, is oh, really strong. It's all over me, I'm sorry. What is it? It's oil, but it's all over my hands, and this stuff is straight, so it will probably make me sick tonight. What kind of oil is it? I don't know. Mm. It's on the thing. I was like breathing it in over there. Well, I could smell it. I was like, gosh, it's really it's strong. strong. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was strong from over there. Oh, Is it, it smells like peppermint. Mm -mm. That's not peppermint. Peppermint would be stronger. It's more like a cinnamon type of. Okay, that's peppermint. It's not I don't know what oils y'all had over there. Well, that was me who was strong. It wasn't that. It was like the. Mm. Okay. So we're going to do this. Keep it going. Yeah, I'll just have her okay. ask. Keep going. Okay, we were having a conversation. And action. So, what I found really interesting was when I asked you a question, I think it was about two weeks in, and I said, What were you actually searching for before you came here? Because you didn't really have an expectation coming here. It was kind of weird when Sean even put it out there to begin with, but I knew, I knew that you were looking for something because you were looking to get away. Yeah. So what were you actually searching for? What did you feel like you were running away from or running to? Because you were thinking about going somewhere anyway. Yes, I was. And so your listeners know, I actually am from the Cayman Islands. Um, and I was going through a lot in my personal life and in, in my business. And I was tired. I was frustrated. I felt like I had the whole world on my shoulders. I was overwhelmed. I was burnt out. And I felt like I was spinning like on this never ending loop. And I really was looking for a break. I wanted a break. I wanted a getaway. I wanted a reset. But my intention was that I was going to leave the island and just like go to a hotel somewhere. And like, I mean, I had intentions of being good, but it was like, I just wanted to, for me, it was, I wanted to get away from the island because I feel it. I felt like I needed a reprieve from everything that was coming at me. So it's that interesting happened. that you're saying that because I think a lot of people, when they're like, I'm going to go find myself and they have to leave where they're at. The reality of it is it's inside. When we go somewhere to find ourselves, usually what we're doing is distracting ourselves from what actually is happening. So what locations were you thinking about going to? I mean, I was looking at Florida because I had some free timeshare weeks. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go to Orlando for three weeks and go to Disney and have like a, 
annexation, whatever you want to call it. I really wasn't intending on going to find myself. Like that was not the purpose of the getaway. It was, I felt like I needed a break from my environment and it just felt very toxic. But yeah, I was going to go use my free timeshare weeks. What would have happened if you did that and went back to a toxic environment without change? It would have been the same. Like so it was just like more of a delay then yeah, of reality. like a band-aid. So when you say toxic environment, and just so our listeners know, like you have a really successful business in the Cayman Islands. Mm-hmm. So I'd love for you to share like what that is so they know. Did, like what was the, describe like what were all the different things going on and why were you feeling like you were being pulled in so many different directions? So I have an audiology clinic. For those of you that don't know, I do hearing and balance testing. And... So I had the clinic, I'm running the clinic, the clinic was successful, I had my staff members. Even though they were running the clinic, it still felt like they needed my permission to do things and they still felt like they couldn't do their job. So they were contacting me for very unnecessary things. And then there was my family that were asking me for different things. And then there was this, I guess you call it a codependent narcissistic relationship that I was in, that I was trying to get out of. Um, And I forgot what the question was. (laughs) Uh, what, what were, what was a toxic environment? So I think it was, it was all of that. It was the relationship, it was the business and it was my family. And with me not having like really strict boundaries in place, I was just saying yes to everything. And then I'd be fed up. Except to you. Except to me. And then I would message Sean, I can't do this anymore. And he'd be like, whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. So, so. That's one thing. You also started a nonprofit. I started a nonprofit. And yes. you traveled a lot too mm-hmm. with different groups of things you were doing from masterminds to different coaching programs. So I put it out there for you to come here. Yes. And you're like, okay, what was the funny stuff? that your dad was saying about so, coming here. Yeah, when I mentioned to my dad that I was gonna come here, he was saying, well, you don't know these people. You, you, you might know them, but you've never been alone with them and you don't know what their intention is. You don't know what they're gonna put in your food and you don't know what they're gonna do. And I'm just thinking, you know, he was going like way off, like you're gonna kidnap me and lock me in the room and like drug me and do something. So that's interesting yeah. how that what if energy of the negative happened. Yeah. But as you were here, what happened with that? So I think it was well, I, maybe like a week and a half or something I was here. And I called dad and I was like, I want to come home. I don't want to be here anymore. It's too hard. And he goes, nope. You said you were going to go. So you got to stay. And I was like, but I thought you would tell me to come home. <laughs> <laughs> so no. And what changes has he made because of the things you're doing? So I'm telling. So of course he wants a rundown of each day. Um, he wants it, but he doesn't always get it. And so I've told him some of the changes that I've made with the eating. And so he's made, or he's trying to make those changes where it comes to eating gluten. And I'm telling him about the gut health. And then I was telling him last night about anaerobic, anaerobic, working out and all of that. So he's making changes in his life as well. So let's go back a little bit. You called him and said, I don't want to be here after a week and a half. Yeah. What was that from? It was hard. It was hard to be, I don't think I was feeling homesick. I was feeling. To the chaos. Okay. To- so, so let's, let's, <laughs> let's explain this. When our mind or our body's used to a certain thing happening and we remove that thing, we actually feel awkward when the chaos is gone because that's what we're used to. Yeah. And then you're in an environment that's, what was this environment like when you walked into it? Because you had some fears, maybe we were going to kick you out if it didn't work or do certain things. Well, I wasn't, a, I didn't have any concern about you doing certain things. For me, it was um, being, in, being in such close proximity and seeing like, like I could no longer pretend like mm. you all were going to see the real in it. And I'm like, suppose they don't like me and suppose they tell me to leave and it like ruins our friendship. Like that's one thing that I was worried about. The what if negatives again. The what if negatives. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, what you see and what you hear is what you get with you with the two of you. It's like, it's not that you're putting something out there when you're coaching your clients or you're doing something online or out in the public. It's not like you're pretending to be something you're not. Like, what you see is what you get, so. Is that shocking, you think? It is, because you don't expect that. 
you don't expect people to be authentic in this day and age. Did you think it was going to be different in person for so long? Like we were going to be different than we are online in that space? Yeah. And you've done some retreats with us. So what do you think? We were just sure. putting out an act for three days maybe and holding it together? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what's interesting about this is I've been in, in Megan in the coaching industry for over nine years, me 15, Megan nine. And what we've seen out there is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it really doesn't, isn't cohesive to the message sometimes. You mean it's a lot of smoke and mirrors? Yeah, smoke and mirrors. (laughs) That's perfectly said. And I know what it takes. And that's inner work first to reflect how you feel to the outside world. So as you were going through this first week, what were people noticing? Because you did a video documentary for Instagram. So what were people saying on those videos about you? Um, there were comments that my face looked brighter, my face looked clearer, that I had the sparkle in my eye was back, that people could see my cheekbones. <laughs> <laughs> second in all, second in it. Um, and it's like, the people that know me said that I, I look like a different person um, than you, I did. did. What did you see? I definitely don't recognize myself in the mirror anymore. I don't. I'm like, I don't know who this person is. Is that, is that a scary thing? It's no, it's not scary, but it's like it's like, wow, I actually look good. I look younger. I don't look like I'm, you know, however many years I am. Um That's a good one. Good 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 spin on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean there's the health benefit like the physical benefits are, you know, there has been some weight loss. There has been some body parts that have gotten smaller, they have deflated. Um so that has been a plus, but you know, I didn't, I really didn't know what I was coming here for. And then you right. do the exercise part, right? Then we do the exercise part. And what would normally happen? You, you said, you would exercise. tell people, but you would tell people you were exercising. I was like, yeah, I'm exercising. Meanwhile, I'm sitting on the sofa, like watching like, Harry Potter or something like that. But, um, but so yeah. you exercised almost, almost every, day. every day, every day. And what happened? We took very few days off no, in our 30 days. Exactly. But the, in, the, in the same instance, you had some injuries you were working through. Yeah. Yes. Your ankle, your knee, lower back. Yes. Was that discouraging at first when it swelled up and then I made you stick your foot in what? Ice water. And how did that ice actually bucket. work? Ice bucket. Ice bucket. How'd yeah. that work? I guess it worked fine. Because you didn't <laughs> stop exercising. I didn't. And I think it, I, and it wasn't because of, the no pain it was because of how I felt when I would exercise and it was also I think not accountability that's not the word but it was you all you all put your time and I know that I'm not doing it for you guys but it's like you put your time and your your energy and your effort into welcoming welcoming me into your home the least I could do was like you know just so is this the first time that people gave to you the of you having to give back Yeah. Gave so much. That's what we do all the time, though. To the Which point of it, like changing, like changing life, changing my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you exercised. Yes. Got on a spin bike. Spin you time. made Megan go, which okay. is awesome. Many, Thank you. How many spin classes did we take? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, see, seven, eight, nine, cool. 10, 11, 12, 13. I think we took 13. I have to go back and look, but I think it's been 13 spin classes. So 13 spin classes, plus you guys exercise, plus we went out and did things. We would go out to eat. You could eat that way. And then as you were working through everything the first couple weeks, I said to you, I don't call it cheat meals. I call it a reward. What did you realize when you ate processed foods? Ooh, what did it do? Sugar is the devil. Well, I remember the first time, the first <laughs> instance of that was when we went to a movie. Yes. You had only been here, what, a week? Yeah, we yeah, did a week. We went a week. week. And it was on a Sunday. Sunday? Was it a Sunday? Uh-huh. Yep. And you had, it was before we went to the movie. Yeah. You had m and M's. Half a bag. Like half a bag of m and M's because I shared it with you all. It was half a bag of m and M's. Didn't think anything of it. We go watch the movie. It was three hours. Right. And I got up and I was, and I could hardly walk. Yep. And that's the interesting thing that people have to realize that food does have a huge inflammatory response depending upon what it is to certain people. And now you know 
Yes. That that had a huge impact, not only on you physically, but mentally it was causing cloudiness and tiredness. Yes. And how did your sleep change as you went through this process also? I got tired a lot earlier in the, in the day now, in the night. Like, were you tired or were you actually getting no, more mean, sleep? No, I don't. Okay, let me rephrase that. I get sleepy earlier in the night than I used to. And what would you normally do before? I wouldn't be going to bed till like midnight. But what were you doing at those hours? Watching TV on the laptop, on the phone. Mm -hmm. So mundane things that really weren't yeah. creating an effect. What would you normally do? So, so now you've been here a month. Yes. You know you can physically push yourself. Yes. You know how to prepare food mm -hmm. correctly. You realized that eating healthy is not that hard because it's, it's not. not that hard to do. And it doesn't take as long. That's the other right. thing that people need to understand is that eating healthy is actually faster than right. eating unhealthy. And you can also prepare all your food in one day or yeah. a couple times a week and really help you out. So when you go home, mm -hmm. Do you have any fears of anything? Of course. Of what? That I'm not going to keep it up. Why would you not keep it up? <laughs> I don't know because Okay, so I'm that's a what here. if. So that's so again. With you. But again, you did it all. We just got yep. it. Like we do with every person we work with, not as extensive as this, but But cuz you you've still could have habits. You still could have stayed in bed and not gotten up to go to the gym. Cuz we didn't force anything, I did tried. we? No, nah, you wouldn't you be able to get in bed. Well, I mean, we couldn't afford to. We said Brighton down there. Tried, but Brighton, <laughs> Brighton would have gotten out of bed. So, so the thing is, there was no mandatory anything in this no. entire time. No. And that's the biggest thing that I've always learned when working with people. You can't force people to do something that they're not interested in doing. And you also have to sometimes take to, into consideration, not just physical limitations, but mental limitations on how to overcome those before you're pushed into an area of uncomfortability. You have to accept that you're going to work through something. And you definitely did accepting that you're going to work through it. So what are the things that you were like, oh my God, this is amazing. I didn't expect this. What are a few of those things that happened? Eating healthy. Okay. It was one. <laughs> when you say eating healthy, talk about that because a lot of folks think when we ask them that question, like, tell us about your diet. Are you eating healthy? A lot of people think, and they'll even say to us, oh, I've got that down pat. I'm already no. eating healthy. No. So when you say if, if, if the eating healthy was such a big thing, like what were you eating before and how was that such a change? For I mean, you? what I was eating before looks like frozen pizza and Wendy's and um, we call them patties in Cayman, but they're like empanadas. Right restaurant food like local so food. things for convenience yes like there was very little healthy stuff in my diet but again when people would ask what would you tell them you're eating healthy right yeah because this is the thing that a lot of people don't get like you said we are who we are and we don't make anything up we this is what we do and we're not yeah. basically saying we don't eat junky food once in a while we do you guys mm -hmm. had some on sunday yes. and it was and again it's a reward system so the interesting thing about this whole process isn't just the actions you took. It was the attitude in which you were actually you having while you were doing these things. How did that feel different that you weren't forced, you weren't grinding this out, you weren't having to do this, that you had a choice and your choice was positive doing it? How did that help? It helped to have the choice. Like Once I realized that I didn't have to, it made it easier to want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know? And... Yeah. Even when given the choice, there were times where I decided that I didn't want to have the Nutella French toast the first day or the what I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, but then it's also, I'm making the intentional choices. Like if I am going to eat the crap, I know that I will feel like crap for days after. Mm -hmm. Right. So that all this is happening and then life at home is happening. Mm -hmm. And some major events happened mm -hmm. while you were here. Yes. Some people died. Some people were born. <laughs> right. Some people had cancer. Some people had cancer and surgery. The police yeah. showed up at your business. Yeah. That wow. whole thing got taken care of completely in a positive way for you now. Yes. So guys, this is about, it wasn't a perfect 30 days at home. There was life happening mm -hmm. that could have thrown most people off. Why mm -hmm. do you think those things this time didn't? Mindset, for sure. Mindset. Um, when all those things started happening, I was probably here like two and a half weeks. 
right. was having a lot more, I wasn't so foggy. Mm. I was thinking a lot more clear. I was a lot more positive. And it's like, I could be Annette. This is who Annette is. I don't have to pretend to be something that I'm not because they've already seen me at my worst. <laughs> so Which like, isn't bad at all. I mean, yeah. not at all. But it's, you know, it was, I could react to those situations in a way that it just came naturally. I didn't have to stop and think, you know, when I got the phone call about my grand aunt passing my res- you know, my response was, wasn't, was totally different than if I, than had it been weeks before I would have been very, it's okay. Like that type of reaction. But right. I was like, well, she's in a better place. Move mm-hmm. Keep moving. Like, what? Mm-hmm. You know what though? Like, I think a lot of people, because you knew that you've got two sisters. Yes. They both, when you came here, knew that there was a potential for them to give birth to your nieces and nephews while you were yes. here. I think most people would have used that as an excuse to put off. Now let's doing put what that in. Did. But let's put that in perspective. But, oh, I don't want to miss or like to leave early. But let's yes, put that yes. in perspective also, because the other thing you were dealing with was a loss of triplets, and that's what your nonprofit is about. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you said something to me that you almost felt guilty for a split second that you weren't constantly thinking about them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did that? Was that a positive thing or a mixture of emotions or how did that really sink in? I think it was a positive thing and I'm going to, I'm going to go like a little woo for some people, (laughs) but um, probably a month before I came here, when I was in a meditation, I actually, the girl, the triplets actually came to me and it was, we just want to go play. We just want to go be little girls. We just want to go play. And I think that that kind of started the catalyst for me not to be consumed with Mm -hmm. trying to keep them and not, not thinking that if days went by with me, not thinking about them meant that I was a bad mother to them or that, um, or like I had, like I would forget about them, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was interesting that it was like, they said they wanted to go play be little girls and here it is. I'm taking care of myself and saying yes to me. And I'm being quote unquote selfish, if you will by, you know, putting all the attention on me. And it's like, I'm not, not thinking about all those things. Mm-hmm. But I did feel guilty for a little bit. And then I was like, but it's what they wanted too. So. Yeah. I think that's one of the first things you shared with me. I think you had been here like somewhere between five and seven days. And you mm-hmm. said, I can really tell that my mindset and everything is shifting because I just realized I'm not completely consumed by thinking about them every single day, yeah. all, like all day long. Yeah, because I would. Like before I would be, The moment I wake up, I would start thinking about them and just like, I was reliving the day that I lost them over and over and over and over. It was like, Mm, that is sure as hell not healthy. So now that all this has gone down, you've gone through the process, what would you want to share with the audience on your big takeaways and what you're looking forward to now? My big takeaways? I think the biggest thing is that you can have balance in being healthy and running your business and having a family, having a social life, that you can do all of that without being burnt out and go crazy. Mm -hmm. You can be a sane person and do it all. And um, what am I most looking forward to? I don't know. I don't want to know. (laughs) You always come back. We're going to be there in a couple weeks anyways. We'll see you in two weeks. Yes, we'll be there in two weeks. Less than two weeks. Um, no, I'm excited to get back home and to implement all the things that I've learned in my reality. Because yes. this is not my reality. It could, anything can be your reality. Yes, but this is not my reality. And again, your reality is going to be completely different now. Yes. So that's what I, would wa- I wanted to explain to people is you left one reality or you're going back to something different because it's your choice. Mm-hmm. Now, how you set that up, and people are going to react differently to you now. People are going to be the same who they were. You are not. So they're going to be a little tension because they're like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. As long as you're being positive with these people, I think there's a ton of things. Not only are you going to bring to your immediate family and yourself, but all the people in the Cayman Islands with the new business opportunities you come up with. Because not only did a network on herself but she also worked on the business side yes. so what are you really looking forward to now on the business side to launch once you get home i'm most excited about the retreat coming up in the fall the light after loss retreat 
Like I'm really, really excited. Can you and explain to people about that? So that retreat, it what it's for women who have experienced miscarriage or pregnancy loss. And it's four days for them to come and really pour into themselves. Um, like they don't have to think about anything. Everything is included. They just have to get their airline ticket and find their butts in Cayman and everything is taken care of. And we, we're going to have different um, therapists there, yoga, some energy healers, lots of, a little bit of fun mixed in as well. Of course, you have to have some fun. But it's really a time to move through the, ener- the emotions and negative emotions around the grief that they've been carrying around the loss. And you have, you've already done one of these. Yes. So what do you think you're going to add more to this time than the first time? I don't know because it was pretty awesome. The first so, so time. that's why you're doing this again. Yeah. And it had a huge impact. Yes, it did. So if people want to know how to find that information out, where can they find that? They can go to that website, which is lightafterlossretreat.com. Okay. And November mid? November the 13th to the 17th. Okay. So yeah. perfect time if you're up north mm-hmm. and want to get the heck out of cold weather. <laughs> Cayman yeah. Islands, where it is. And you're starting a podcast. Yes. Yeah. Right? What's podcast. it called? It's called the Island Mama Show. Awesome. And there's all kinds of cool things in the, work, yeah. in the works. This is what I would love for people to understand. We are overstressed physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. These thoughts will never come to the surface, and the actions will never occur in a positive way. And by being here, it's opened what I've seen your mind to the capability that you're barely touching what you can do and you're about to unleash it on the world. And I'm really looking forward to watching how this whole thing unfolds because I know there's some really cool things about to happen. And then you got a new little buddy while you were here too. Who? Right. Oh, not Kobe. Kobe is <laughs> a Kobe. No, not Kobe. <laughs> Annette was not a fan of the dogs. Go. No. Yeah, so I got my little buddy Brighton. I'm gonna miss Brighton, my little buddy. It took her a while to warm up to me though, but it takes her a while to warm up. And she anyway. did. I was like, that was it. Yeah. Fuck it took it. So. Yeah. So it was a pleasure, honestly, having you here because so fun. I love it. You got me back in the gym every day. It's like we're like family now. Well, you are definitely. I know. And that's the thing is, life is too short not to connect to people. Yes. And when we're in our own mess, we forget about that. Mm-hmm. So that's what we really wanted you to come on here is explain how it was one thing you thought, but it became something so different and bigger and better. Mm-hmm. And that Meg and I are going to be doing this a little bit more often. We don't know the time length for everyone. We wanted to test this out. You were a perfect test subject. <laughs> well, I <laughs> it was fun. Great. What would you say to someone who is experiencing like stress, overwhelm, um, and they they just they burn out? They know that like they know there is another way that is happier, more abundant, more productive, more Mm -hmm. effective. Yeah, like more balance in all those areas of their lives. Because I think it's so easy for us to get super fixated on business and work and career, and I just need to hire all these people to help me with my next funnel or help me with the next like tactic or strategy so I can become whatever I want to become, Mm -hmm. which we do some of that as well. So that person who is in that place, kind of like where you were, what would you say to them? Like what would be your advice to them? Well, first of all, that bullshit story that, can I say? Yes, you can say whatever you want. (laughs) (laughs) That bullshit story that they're telling themselves that they don't have the time, it, it is a bullshit story. You know, being in business for 12 years, I had all those stories myself. I don't have time for vacation. I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to do this. I can't be away from the business, X, Y, Z. But it's not until you realize that, especially if you are an entrepreneur, that you are the business. Mm-hmm. And if you don't take care of yourself, then your business is going to fall to shit. Yep. And don't make it a compromise of, well, I have to work 40 hours a day on my business and I cannot take 20 minutes to walk around my neighborhood and just breathe fresh air. Don't do that because that's not healthy. That's insane. Um, And if you want, I mean, the best way to see it is to come and see it firsthand. Like if you want to see how you can do business and stay out of overwhelm, stay sane, have a family, have a social life, have fun, then you obviously need to come to the Structured Freedom House. Oh, 
yes. <laughs> and that name is yes, I named it sexual freedom. Yes, but you know, it's you have to, especially entrepreneurs and people in in high level positions. You have to take care of yourself because if you don't, then you're just gonna like the business will be the pot. You might get fired. I don't know what else might happen, but not positive. Things. Nothing positive. Like you have to, if you can find. Everybody can find the time to go on Instagram. Right. I don't care who they are. If they can find 15 minutes to go on Instagram, they can be on Instagram while they're on the treadmill at the gym. Exactly. You know so, so I want to let everyone know we'll do a follow-up interview in a month to see how oh, everything's yeah. going. Really? And keep everyone. So that oh gives yes. You some reason to. <laughs> right. So so I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. And thank you, Annette, for thank you going for through this experience. Me. It's yeah. been awesome. And we will be doing an update and we can also give you guys information. Megan always puts this in the notes at the end of how you guys can contact us to possibly go through an experience like Annette just did. Yes, because you have to. Like, I think everybody needs to do this. Thanks guys for being here. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.